you are welcome. You are very, very welcome to the Go Farm. I'm your host, Westside JJ. I'm here with my co-host, Freeway Zoe, and also with one of the young hitters from our city, from Fresno, California. Here at, what's the name of this gym, bro? Marquitos Boxing. We're at Marquitos Boxing with Joshua the Come Up Kid Simpson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This weekend, September 14th, he'll be fighting Jonathan Gonzalez in Bakersfield at the Mechanics Bank Arena. Yep. Will you be defending your crown? Yep, I'll be defending my 45 featherweight strap. He'll be That's defending up, his featherweight man. title. I'll be bringing it back home. Yes, That's sir. Up, yes, man. sir. So introduce yourself to the people who are not familiar with you. Uh, my name is Joshua Simpson. Uh, I grew up in Fresno. I started fighting at 19. I've been fighting for a minute now. Um, about to turn pro. This is going to be my last time we fight, so definitely I'm going to be the next pro fighter, the next big pro fighter coming out of Fresno, California. Come up, kid, 559. You can get at me on IG and shout out everybody doing their thing in the city. Hell yeah. So what, what's, the, what's the path you take as an amateur MMA fighter heading to the pros? Like, what is, what is the path that you took to get professional? Uh, well, first it comes with listening to your coaches and not being hard-headed. I feel like a lot of fighters try to speed it up because they just want that big bag already, you know, and to get you on the big screen. But first you got to get ready because if you're not ready for those kind of fights, then you're just wasting your opportunity at going pro, you know. You're just doing it for no reason. So I had to do a lot of training, a lot of deep work on my technicality, not just being an athlete, being technical, you know, and then get an experience because a lot of times you need experience before you can take a step up. You can't just jump in there and get in there and fight a killer. You know, you got to have experience and then go in there. So a lot of a lot of a lot of hours and a lot of experience okay okay that's tight so, so, so uh you find jonathan gonzalez this weekend what do you know about him what do you know about your opponent uh, i know that he's a good scrapper from the bay you know a lot of a lot of guys that come out of the bay they're very scrappy uh, i don't feel like he's too technical honestly but i think that he's gonna come to put on a good fight he's gonna fight hard with a lot of heart so for, for me i'm just ready to throw some hands i don't think he's gonna try to grapple a lot so i'm finally happy that we don't have to fight these, this a wrestler because I'm always trying to wrestlers always trying to take me down. But this fight, I think I'm gonna have a good uh, fire fight, a lot of explosive fireworks that fight. Okay, I, I watched your last fight against uh, Stefan Espinoza. Yes, sir. And you pretty much won in a dominant fashion. Yes, sir. What was uh was that more about your preparation or was that just some shortcomings on his end? I think that was about my preparation because. Uh, the fight previous to that, you know, I got, I feel like I got robbed over at 559 fights. You know, I'm, I'm not here to complain about it, it is what it is. So, but that's why I went into my next fight with the mentality of I need to finish. That's it. Yeah. That's I'm right. not, I'm not going to let no decisions happen because it's all, it's on me to get in there and get the job done, you know? So definitely went in there with the intentions of getting it done early and that's what happened. Okay. That's dope. That's dope. Okay. I had a quick question. So I see that. We watched over your first fight, mm -hmm. and you can tell from from you fighting Fernando, which yeah. was your first fight, yeah. and then your next three fights, you went, you know, you went on the streak right there, man. Yes, what, what what changed your mentality? Like, what got you going, man? Like, was, did you feel like? Because I personally think you wasn't supposed to lose that first one. Bro. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. That's yeah. exactly what it was. It was like. Yeah, pitched off had, a little bit. Yeah, yeah okay. I had came All straight right. from boxing MMA, and we had been working so much uh -huh. on. Uh, we have, we have been working so much on grappling, right. but we hadn't worked on submissions because I was a boxer just getting used to wrestling. Right. So when I got submitted, I was like, bruh, no fucking way I put in all these hours to right. come out here and lose, you know? So I was, right. after that, it was all grappling from every angle that right. I needed in grappling. And I was like, and I'm about to go get the rest of these guys. No fucking yeah, cause way. Yeah, because your whole fight, like the, the neck, the, when you got into the ring on your second fight, it was... Yeah. Big difference from right. that, that that first fight you had, man. And yeah. you really went out. Shout out to TKO. Yeah, yeah. TKO second TKO, round. Yeah. TKO second round that one. Yeah. So what's the what's the difference between conditioning for the from, from boxing to this fight? Man? Boxing MMA is two different things because yeah. I feel like. But I feel like MMA is more of a grind, you know? Right, so it's right. a grind. It's like a hard mano y mano. A lot of strength in MMA right. versus boxing conditioning is a lot of smoothness, a lot of gotcha. nonstop movement and being able to be light on your feet, you know? You don't have to really do that for MMA. And it takes right. a lot to be light on your feet for a long period of time. Right. 
So definitely a lot more conditioning for boxing than MMA, but a harder grind for MMA for sure. Got you, got you, got you. Man. Okay, so uh, I mean, you you're six and four as an amateur fighter. So yes, how sir. how do you bounce back from taking a loss? Like what 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 does it do for you mentally going into the next fight? The next, honestly, it just makes me more hungry because I'm like. I'm here. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to learn. As an amateur, I'm here to make mistakes, you know? So it just makes me more hungry to get back in there and show that I fixed whatever I messed up on in that fight, you know? Like, I never take it too personal or take it too hard. It always just gives me motivation to go get the next dub and go start the next streak, you know? Okay, okay. So let's get a little bit into more of your personal life. Yes, sir. I watched something, an uh, interview you did, uh, like a day in a life type thing, and it said that you moved from Fresno to Bakersfield, yeah. back to Fresno. Like, how was that uh, growing up? Going from <laughs> so, from South Valley up back into the cent more closer to the Central. Yeah, I think that uh, I didn't like it in Bakersfield at all. I know I didn't know a lot of people out there either, and I really just couldn't wait to get home. Like Bakersfield was cool, but it's a lot of it's a lot of farmers and stuff like that. Like, it's not really city people out there like us. It's really ag agriculture type people right. out there and that just wasn't like my kind of route so i was hella happy to come home honestly because i was like everybody i know over here was athletes and stuff like that and i kind of had more of a crowd to hang out with so definitely it was a cool transition but i'd rather have been in fresno right Vegas. right did, did you play any sports at high school uh i played football yeah. i played football in high school what you played in uh, what position i played wide receiver wide receiver yeah. okay got you got did you, you go to school out high school here yeah, I, w I went to Bakersfield High School, and then I went to Fresno High after that. Okay, okay nice. that's yeah. what's up, man. That's yeah. so, what's up. so compared to football, like, what are the similarities in preparation and discipline when you transition into, into fighting? I feel like just uh, the ability to the ability to be uh, resilient. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like in football, you need to be resilient to the opponent opposing you, you know? Mm -hmm. But as far as like outside of the ring, like discipline, I feel like it's a lot different because my whole life fight started changing when I fight because I had to fast, I had to oh. diet, I had to do all these things right. that you don't have to do for football. You know, like right. football, you can eat whatever you want. You're trying to bulk up all the time, but you're still a beast, you know, but right. you're just always trying to bulk up. But fighting, you're, you got to train starving. Mm -hmm. So it's way different than getting prepared for football because it's like, each day you're watching what you're eating. Each day your calories yeah. and stuff like that to take. And, out. and you're watching how much you're conditioning. You know, football you you're more working more on strength. Right. Yeah. But boxing every day you're trying to push yourself the farthest you can get tired, and then keep going. Yeah. Versus football you don't really have. You're working on more short explosive stuff. You know. Right. And you, and you have to watch your weight right. too. Right. So right. what 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 is your typical like? Before you know, like say you have a fight that's coming up this Saturday. Yes, sir. So what has been like your meal prep for like the last two months or so? So, okay, so for like the last few months, yeah. I just eat straight veggies and I'll do like a 24 hour fast basically because I'll eat one meal a day. Okay. So, like, and then on top of that, I'll try to eat the meal before I go to training. Okay. So that way that I fast the whole time I'm sleeping. Right. You okay, know? got you. That makes sense. So that sense. way I, my body keeps eating, eating, eating. I, right. I don't want my metabolism to stop because if I eat and sleep, uh -huh. then it'll stop, you know. But right. I want it to stay fast. So when it comes time to cut all this weight off, right. it just comes off fast, you know. So, so not to cut you off, but have you ever had to jump from class to like say you have to you was at 135, I think you would fight at 135, right? 132? Uh, I fight at 145, but 145. I used to fight at 135. Yeah, 145. Yeah. So you have to gain 10 pounds? Yeah, uh, not really. Because no? I'm honestly big. Yeah. That's what it is. So I had to cut a lot to make 35. But okay. 45 is not that hard for me because I'm really like the 150, 155 walking around. Okay. So I didn't really have to gain weight for 45s. It's more like I'm just comfortable at 45s when yeah, I fight there. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I, Definitely. That's, it's, a lot, it's a lot of bo um, that boxing stuff. And, yeah. Oh, man. So yeah, 145 lot. is about the weight you want to fight at going yeah. forward? Uh, no. Honestly, going forward, turning pro, my coach wants to be smaller. Okay. You mm. know, because in the pros, now you're playing with money and guys are going to try to get the advantage every way possible. So if I right. fight a guy at 45, he probably walks around at 80, oh, you know, oh, and I damn. walk around at 55, you know, so coach wants me to go down to 35, you know, so we can fight guys that are our size, you know. Right, right, right. Or That's even we could get the weight advantage. So gotcha. after you win Saturday, what's that meal going to be? Like Man, a steak or something? I'm really, I'm vegetarian, oh, so I don't shit. eat no meat. I don't no eat no shit. meat. How long, how, how long has it been like that? So six years now. Six years. Oh, six years. Yeah. And you're how old? 23. 23. So yeah. you were a vegetarian since a teen. Yeah. Damn. And were you fighting at 17? No. No. No, I wasn't. I wasn't fighting. I was still playing football. So the thing was, 
though, I would really say like a hard five years because the first year mm -hmm. when I was transitioning, I was still eat meat here and there, you know. Yeah. And then eventually, I slowly got it out of my diet, but now I completely no meat. No shit. Yeah. Congratulations, oh, buddy. Damn. Damn. So, yeah, you know, a lot of people they don't they don't like that diet. My coach hates that diet. He eats everything. Really? He eats all the meat. He's like, bro, so, he can't even believe I'm vegetarian. I, I, I hear you mention your coach a lot, man. He played a lot into like you and this boxing stuff and yes. transition to MMA. So, uh, my coach Mike, my MMA coach. Right. Uh, I think that he's like one of the biggest people that ever invested in me fight wise, right. like beyond fighting too, like okay. personal life wise. Like, right. that's what's up, man. like I had a lot of coaches, but he was my only coach. I feel like I had that's like, oh, you don't got to ride the training, I'll come get you. Today. All that's the way from the other side of town, I'll come pick that's you up, up to take man. you to shout train. out to him, man. Shout yeah, out to shout him. out to Coach Mike. So definitely yeah. big role in my life and fighting. Period. And is, is Mike from Dethrone? Dethrone. Dethrone. Like coach Mike's from Dethrone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is Dethrone is a, a locally based. Uh, yeah, group. yeah. So Dethrone, they've been, but they are some OGs. They've been around the MMA game since long before I was even thought of, right. and they've always created top fighters. You guys know Josh Koscheck, uh, yep. uh, Kane Velasquez, uh, mm -hmm. Conor McGregor. All those guys are coming out of Dethrone. So okay, so up, it's a lineage. Pretty yeah, much. it's Dethrone's yeah. a lineage, bro. It's a long time top tier MMA gym, and we just happen to have one of the better ones here in Fresno. So shout okay. out to Dethrone. Let me ask you, what got you? What switched you from boxing to man? Uh, boxing MMA was honestly the harsh truth is I felt like I didn't have a future in boxing because I had a couple promoters uh -huh. fall out on me when I was boxing right. and I kind of felt lost in the boxing world where I didn't uh -huh. have like good guidance right. and so uh, I knew coach I knew coach Mike had it hard for me like he always told me because he's like I don't care what you do like I'll always be here for you right. and so uh, I decided to stick over to MMA because I felt more comfortable there, like, with where I was going. Mm -hmm. And then ever since then, I actually fell in love with MMA, yeah. and I do both. So the so the boxing world in Fresno, I mean, we, we just sat down with some young talent from out of Fresno, some, yeah, some national talent. The so, top hottest right there. So yeah. would you say um, prior to, like, historically, is the boxing the boxing trail in Fresno not as, as strong as the MMA? Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Definitely, if you're a boxer, it's... A little bit more of a struggle to get somewhere in boxing versus MMA. It's a lot easier to get on and get going, you know? Yeah. Like, boxing is kind of like a, there's like a secret co a world of connections yeah. that you have to get into to get somewhere in boxing versus MMA. You kind of could just walk to your local MMA gym and say, hey, I want to fight. And you could get on a big card and just start pushing from there. Yeah, I actually uh, met an a, a, a amateur boxer from Sacramento, and um, he was telling me that same thing, that yeah. he... That it's more political. Like right. he's like, I'm probably just as good as a lot of these people that are are known because I fought with them and I know. Right. But I just didn't have the connections that they right. had. So they had like they knew the people. It's like, right. like a who Pop, you know type Pops thing. knows this guy or my coach knows this guy that knows that guy and he pulled me up. You yeah. Know, like that. Versus uh -huh. if you don't know, if you don't have that connection, you're just fighting your way to the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And then it's, it's hard to fight your way to the top because they're moving youth to the side for that guy that has the connections with Pops, mm, you know? Yeah. And so you, he's getting the spotlight based off that, not really based off his skills. He could be a good fighter too, don't get me wrong, but it's more so of the connections he has than the skills he has. Okay. So, so would you say Dethrone like would be someone that's good to fight with, knowing, knowing that they have like that, those professional connections? Right. So right, coming definitely. through that, that tree? Right, definitely. Like I feel like I feel like the throne is a great tree to like. Like if you're trying to go somewhere, they they could take you somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Like that's somewhere you can go, and it's open arms at that. You know, it's not we're gonna pick this guy or pick this guy. They're not choosing the best nobody. person will fight. Right, it's yeah. like the person who comes and puts in the work. We're gonna let you fight, and we're gonna help you get to where you're trying to go. That's, that's what definitely how So what you look at? I know it's a one on one sport, but do you guys almost look at it as a team? Yeah, mm. I think a lot of people have a misconception of MMA because they think like oh. It's just that guy that goes in there and fights, you know, so it's, he all did it by himself. But really, it's not like that at all. We have so we have a group of like six guys that you grapple with every day. Yeah. You know, you guys cut weight. To, weight cuts are hard by yourself. Yeah. When you have your team there, you know, your coach is there and then you have three guys that are fighters, too. Yeah. You're like, OK, we're doing this together. <laughs> then even going to fights like I've because me personally as a fighter, I've been to fights where I fought by myself. No team, no mm -hmm. fighters. And that shit didn't feel good. Yeah. Mm. But when you have, when you get to the to fights and you see other fighters that you've been training with, and you're like, oh, well, this guy's good at this and this guy's good at that, and when they put all those tools together for me, so I don't have no problem going in there fighting now because I know I train with these guys. So right. definitely a team thing in MMA. Still. Yeah, I learned that. I, I, I can't remember what fight that was, but it ended up like each group 
ended up fighting in the ring. It was like it was like a melee. Yeah. You, you know what fight yeah, that was? Yeah. I, and I it was like exactly a group of fighters. They all had, it was pretty much groups of fighters. Right. Fighting each on other. each side, and they just kind of just said, "Forget the fight, we fighting each other." Yeah, they they kind of do that kind of stuff all the time. But why is that? I don't know. I really don't. It's kind of nonsense, really. <laughs> it's really crazy. So in public, do you ever get the urge, like, or do you have the discipline to control, like, knowing that you can probably beat up almost anyone your size? Right. Do you ever get that urge, like, man, you don't know who you're talking to? No, honestly, you know what's crazy is you would think that because even I thought that when I first started fighting. Mm -hmm. In my head, I'm thinking like all, I thought all fighters thought like that. Yeah. But then as I got into the fight world, you honestly get caught off guard because a lot of fighters don't want to fight people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They like they want to refrain as far possible from fighting as they can because they know they can fuck you up. Right. So they're like, please just let's work this out any other way except for fighting. Can you get in trouble by law? Like if you fight or somebody? Not because defending yourself. Not defending yourself? But attacking someone, definitely you could get in trouble. You're uh, got you, using got your you. hands illegally as a lethal weapon, you know? Yeah. So. Let, 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 me, let me ask you this. So like far as like what JJ was saying, you know, like uh, someone pushing your limits or something like that. And we know a lot of athletes. I know some athletes personally who got in trouble. Right. Like, how do you keep yourself from getting a lot of trouble? Do you just, do you go out? Do you go to clubs? Do you, I mean, you're pretty young, man. Right. So do you go out to clubs and stuff no, like that? Or I, you just? I think I definitely, uh, I go out, you know, I go, mm -hmm. I go out time to time with some of my Do you have the stuff. right group around you, though, when yeah, you go out? Yeah, exactly. Okay. I only go out, I only go out to places where I know my peoples are going there. And gotcha. we, we're able to go there. Somewhere my peoples wouldn't let me go right. where we're not supposed to be. Or we're not supposed to be doing something less. So only places where it's good, right. you know, my peoples are good and it's good. Right. There. Good environments only, you know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, like, me personally, I was just having a conversation with somebody and I was just yeah. telling them, like, when people make it out of Fresno, they you don't usually hang around with the right group. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, me, I'm, I'm around people, like, like-minded people too. Right. But we also know, like, what's our limit and stuff like that. And it's right. like, hey, if we don't feel right going there, bro, let's not go there. Yeah. Let's not mess up our money. Let's not fuck up our money. Right. Or anything we got going on. Just for a good time, right? We can go do this shit at yeah, home. Yeah, exactly. As far as women exactly. drinking, or somebody doing drugs, whatever the case might be. Never worth your future. Never, never, never. So I just wanted to make sure that you know you got a good group around you, yeah. and you know somebody that there to tell you no, and you actually right. listen. You know, because yeah, it seems like you're pretty respectable. You know, I don't want to call you kid, but you're young. Right. You know? Yeah, like I'm young, a young yeah. man. Come up, kid. You know, so and then I see all the the people in here. They look up to you and stuff yeah. like that in here, yeah. man. Y'all respect each other. Yeah, that's another reason that I I try to make sure I stay out of trouble too. You know, uh -huh. I think. Uh, there's a lot of people that depend on you. Right, right. For besides sure. yourself, no matter what, no matter who you are in life, you know, it doesn't even matter if you're a top athlete or if you're a regular everyday worker. Right. Even though it feels like you're making decisions for yourself, you're not. There's a lot of people that are dependent on you to make the right decisions and the right choices every day. So Most definitely. I man. think about that a lot too. That's what keeps me on the right path. Right. That's what's up. So, with that said, has any has, it, has any of your loved ones ever hit you up for for defense? Like, Josh, man, this this guy's tripping. Man. I need you to come help me out. You, 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 know, you get those calls ever? Yeah, you know, it's actually funny. I got that call a couple times. A couple <laughs> times. <laughs> really, you know, like, I have some friends that they're just like, oh, well, this guy or that guy or this happened or that happened. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I could whoop 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 And I, it, honestly, it makes me not want to teach them that because I'm like, yeah. That's not what this is for, you know. Like right. it would, I would definitely want to teach you to defend yourself to be able to defend yourself. Yeah. Right. But, but I don't want to teach you to fight because you have problems. Right. That's right. So, so is your moms and pops from Fresno? Yeah. So moms and pops are from Fresno. Okay. Uh, I actually, actually, my whole like dad side of the family, they're we're all from here. You know, my mom's side, they're from Indiana, but moms oh. and pops, and then my whole dad side, they're all from here. Oh, that's what's up, man. Yeah. So how they feel about you? Does your mom like? You? Be careful, like, don't, you know. Yeah, my mom, I, okay, well, I didn't have the best background growing up. Yep. So I've always kind of, you know, we all have our background. My mom right. has always been one to egg me on. To, you to, been what? To, she's always been one to egg me on to fight. Oh, okay, gotcha. So gotcha. when I started fighting, it was only a plus for her. Like, oh, that's bro, She's at all my fights. She's the loudest one. She's probably the most violent one. That's but she's up. the sweetest lady ever, so you would not think, you know. That's wrong, But she man. turns up, though. She turns up. She likes that's it. Right. Shout out to mom, man. Is there yeah. any, any boxers or any fighters in your in your family tree? Uh, my Actually, my grandpa John was a boxer. My grandpa John was a boxer, but that's my great-grandpa. Oh, okay. But that's as, far, as far as outside of that, we don't really have a lot of fighters in my family. Okay. okay. Just me and grandpa John. Okay, so... Explain these titles to us. We got these titles up front, two yes, title sir. belts. Explain where G. Yes, how yeah, you and which one came first? All right, this one came first. Mm -hmm. This is my first MMA title. Uh, this is right after I fought for 559. I just needed to make sure that I collected a strap because, bro, if you're not fighting for straps, 
after you get so good, you know, then what are you doing? So I right. had to go get me a Bakersfield MMA belt. Shout out Bakersfield Combat Promotions. That's and then so. this one over here is my boxing belt. So shout out Coach Marquitos, who went and got that at Fulton here in Fresno. And this is boxing for the, the fight for the fallen. So this is like a, a good a charity event that they're going to put on. Uh, actually, we're going to have another one at Chichanti coming up in January. So stay tuned for that. Okay. But yeah, so this is my MMA belt for Bakersfield and this is my boxing belt for here in Fresno. That's what's up. Can, so that, can please? you go defend both of them if needed to be or yeah. you done with boxing? No, no, I'm de I'm defending both of them. So this one, I'm, on Saturday, I'm going to defend. Okay. And then this one, I'm going to defend at Chichanti in January. That's what's up, man. Yeah. So when you do get that big call and they tell you like, hey man, you know, we want you to sign with us, man. We got a check. Uh, we get some more uh, endorsements. So what is something that you look forward to buying, man? If not for you, for your mom or someone, man? Definitely, I feel like first first and foremost, truthfully, goal is to reinvest into fighting. Okay. Because gotcha. I, I feel like a lot of times uh, people pass up on that. Mm -hmm. But that's going to get you where you want to go to get the bigger checks to buy your mama house. Gotcha. So first, I got to make sure I can get somebody that can help me with my nutrients. If I can, invest in somebody that can give me better strength and conditioning, you know. Gotcha. And, and all that kind of stuff, making sure transportation is where all your gloves are where they need, your shin guards, you know, making sure you're up on everything you need for training, investing in your actual self. Gotcha. And then you can go get the big bread and then turn up. Do you, do you still wear on surf? Yeah, I definitely still wear on surf. Shout out on surf. They're going to be on my shorts for my fight. Those are always going to be my guys. I feel like I'm going to always have them as a sponsor and always rock their stuff that's all the way. Yeah, that's how I first heard of you. I had an interview YB, uh, Fly yeah. Y. Yeah, mm -hmm. shout yeah, out he Fly. Told me, that's uh, my guy right there. Yeah, he was talking about the guy, the guys they sponsored to different people, and he brought you up. Right. So, and I see you wear the on surf shorts. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. so all that's, the time. That's all dope. Time. That's dope. I always have on surf on. All the way to the UFC, to WBC belt, Premier Boxing, whatever I wear, I'm going to have some on surf on for sure. That's what's up, man. Shout so, out to them. So, man. you say shout you're not too far from being a pro like when do you think will be your first pro match so this is gonna be actually my sign off at me fight this is my last amateur fight ever so That's what's up, this man. is this is a this is my write-off right here and okay. then i'm going pro so i should be pro by by november or december this year so you have to sign a contract so yeah you you have to sign a contract but it's not like oh you got to sign to fight for four years when you it's like our four fights you just got to sign for one fight and that's okay. it you know, and then you could just be, well, for me, I'm going to be open, you know, like for boxing, like for Jordan, them, you know, they kind of sign to a promotion. Mm -hmm. Your promotion kind of helps you with MMA. It's kind of, there's not really a promotion that you sign to. It's just like you stay open, you fight who wants to come pay you to fight. You like know? like any, you could go and fight like any league pretty much. Right. Like yeah, you, you go UFC, the Bell, is it Bellator League? Yeah, Bellator, you know, any of that. A one championship, you could go any of that, you know. So it just at the drop of a dime, right? right it's no right. like. No, right. no real full commitment to any league. Right. No full, no full hella fight commitment. Just so do, fight. would that become become political? Will like Dana White say, "Oh, you're over there fighting, so I'm gonna focus on these guys who nah. are more focused on UFC, and I'm gonna let you go and do do your thing over there"? Or I feel like I feel like only if you make it that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like only if you make it that like, oh, I want to fight for the woo woo woo. I feel like as long as you don't make it political and you just fight and you just say you want to fight the best. I don't think he would be. I don't think it would get political in that way, you know. But if you make it political yourself, it can get political. So stay. I would just stay away from being political about it. Okay. But some fighters don't, you know. Some fighters they boy, they talk, they're they're trash, you know, and then that's what happens. They, yeah, and then they and they get politics. Right. Do right. you have any fighters that you like look up to? Right now, Kamzat Chemaev, I feel like, and definitely Javante Davis. You know, like everybody look up to Tank. Yeah, Tank yeah, is the yeah, goat yeah. right now, you know, like. Yeah. I feel like for me it's a little bit different because I've been watching Tank right. before he was a, a national star, you know, right. yeah, like a worldwide star. Mm -hmm. And I seen his grind because before he was popping, everyone hella thought that he would just get knocked out eventually because he always gets hit. Right. And right. they always underestimated his boxing ability. And then now that he's on the biggest stages that he could be on and he's still doing it, yeah. I feel like that's what hella draws me to Tank because it's like yeah, through all the adversity, through all the talk, through all everyone going against him. He kept his style and showed that it was perfected, you know. So that's what's up, man. Definitely tank. That's my biggest. That's okay, my biggest. Since you say game. hit, I watched your fight with Raul. With how do you yeah. say his name? Raul. Ra Raul Valavindos. Yeah, and you yeah. took some punches in that fight. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you yeah. didn't necessarily uh, give up. Right. You, you right. kept fighting. Him. Yeah. So would you say you have a, a strong chin? Yeah, I think I think that I have a a strong chin and a tank kind of style fighting too, where mm -hmm. I like to kind of take shots to give shots because for me. 
guys know that I can strike already, so they normally don't attempt to strike with me when I get in there. So the only way to get guys to try to strike with me is to draw them in and let them throw at me, you right. know, like try to get them to throw get them, get them comfortable. so I can counter. Yeah. yeah, so definitely I think that I have that style too where I take shots and get shots, so I got to have a strong chin, you know. Do you play possum a little bit? Yeah, like, oh, always. Oh, man, fatigue always. and then bounce. Yes. Fourth, and then you just started wearing and off. And then on you the just ass? go off. Yeah, yeah I think I do man. that a lot. I think I have a very, I build my style around that. You know, I build my style around making guys think that I'm tired, so that that's they can come up. in, and then I can turn up. You know. Yeah, I learned that. I used to uh, for anger management class. They used to take us boxing yeah. when I was in like fifth grade. Right. And my coach was actually best friends with Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so. so they used to teach us some type of stuff. And it was like, man, play possum a little bit. Act like right. you're tired. And, right. That get people to start. They actually start wearing themselves out, trying to throw. At yeah, you. trying to throw at you, knock right. you out, and then by the time that third quarter come, you just whoop their ass. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can definitely give you some good strategy. Yeah, I got you. At this, man. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's up, man. Do you think you will ever get into like training fighters? I think my coach Marquito said it best. Some fighters are good at training uh, fighters, but a lot of fighters aren't good at training fighters because so they're just good at fighting. Yeah. Mm. You know, because it's, it's, it's really. It's not hard to understand both sides of the game, but it's hard to explain yeah. one yeah. side of the game, you know? Yeah. So gotcha. definitely. Yeah, that's that's smart because, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a basketball fan, huge. Yes, and they sir. always say, well, why don't this guy coach? Because he was such a great player. Right. Like, a great player doesn't make you a great coach. Exactly. Because right. you have to, like, you have to have the communication skills. Right. Right. You have to have the desire and the drive to want to, like, make kids better. Not necessarily just better basketball players. Right. Just better right. competitors, better people. Right. And not every basketball player can do that just because they're really good. Right. So that was, like, a realistic answer. Like, I could see on your face you was like, nah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I mean, just, yeah. you're like, only 22, so right. like you probably like, I'm I'm yeah. far beyond trying to train. Like, right. I got a professional right, career right, ahead of right, me. Right. So maybe later on in life, you would probably say, you know what? Yeah. I'm down, you know, I'm towards the end of my career. Maybe I will want to train. Right. But right now, I can see it. You, you got a whole pro career ahead. Yeah. You're not worried about yeah. trying to train, yeah. train yeah, other not, fighters. Definitely not. Definitely not. Not, not at all. Is there is there as far as like I know you said um, Tank is one of your favorite boxers like do you look at any other athletes and get inspiration from them? You know, honestly, time to time I do, but a lot of times I don't. A lot of times my inspiration comes from just straight fighters, mm. uh, and a lot of times it's old school fighters too. Yeah. Honestly, I used to look to other sports to like for motivation and stuff, mm. but I feel like it's just not the same because it's more like a, a big play or a highlight always. You know, it's not ever about the grind really mm. as for the stars in other sports, you know? So definitely I think for me, just more old school fighters as who I look to outside of the main fighters, you know? Like who are some of the old school fighters? Marvin Hagler. Okay, Marvin Hagler. Marvin Marvel Hagler Marvelous Marvin? Yes, bro. I feel like a lot of people underestimate or underrated his career and what he had to go through, you know? Persever perseverance wise because it wasn't just about being a fighter for him bro he had to literally bro they wouldn't even give him his nickname he had to go and get his legal name changed for them to say his nickname in the ring and mm -hmm. still came to became one of the best undisputed champions you watched this fight with uh um, with a uh, sugar ray yeah sugar yeah. ray and i feel like another good one was him and tommy hearns too okay hitman tommy hearns yeah yep. they were they were going after it you know and okay. another legend I look at too, I feel like is a goat is Roberto Duran. Okay. Oh but shit. Okay. Legend Savage right there, man. Yeah. Like I think I think he's one of my favorite fighters too. Like I have him and and Marvin on my wall because. And that's a good pick because I mean those are legendary fighters right. to people who know fighting. Right. right. But those aren't names that like. I mean, Jump I'm a casual right. boxing fan. Yeah, right. I know a little right. bit about boxing, but right. I wouldn't have had to expect you. I would expect you to maybe say Sugar Ray or right. maybe maybe like Floyd or somebody right. like that or right. Tyson. Right. Yeah, but Tyson you, Ali. Yeah, you know, but you, you picked fighters who were legit fighters, right. but not necessarily the A-list names. Yeah, A-list names. names. Yeah, household so, names, not household name fighters, just great fighters. Yeah, right, great right, champions. right. Yeah. So you like the grit, the gritty fighters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like I like the fighters who get in there and they get in there to get the job done. They're going to get it. You know, they're not. They're not trying to be stylistically flashy and stuff. They're getting in there. They're coming to get you, and they're coming to get the job done. And like Bernard it. Hopkins, you know, familiar with yeah, Bernard, Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins, definitely him too. So you know, like what what would be like your perfect like perfect win? So would it be a knockout or a UD? Honestly, for me, a knockout wouldn't even be my perfect win no more because I feel like everyone knows I could do that now. A okay. perfect win for me is an arm bar or a triangle right now. Okay. A submission win, something that people don't think I can do. Okay. That's a, that's my perfect win right now. Gotcha, Something that gotcha. people don't think I could do it and do it, gotcha. pull it off. Could you do? Could you do like a sharpshooter in MMA? I mean, if you that's not put, realistic though. I think I think if you could pull it off, 
<laughs> you can do it, but it's not realistic. That's, that was one of my yeah. favorite wrestling moves. But it sounded yeah. like I don't think no, I don't Shout think no fighter. Hart. Yeah, I don't think no fighter will let Wait, you, you just put the figure four. No, no the, the sharpshooter. Sharp Bret Hart. I don't think no fighter, legit fighter, hey, will let you, you put really him in a sharpshooter. You can really get that guy's leg and do that. Yeah, yeah if they go, let bro. you do all that shit, dude. I know yeah, the crippler cross face is something you can do. Like that's something you can pull off. Like yeah. if you get somebody in, actually pulled off a Boston Crab one time, believe it or not. Like that if I, but that's if a little he, easier. Yeah, because you just got to get on their back and pull their legs back. Right. So that's right. the right. sharpshooter. It takes some. Yeah, gotta, you got to wrap the legs, wrap yeah. them yeah. and twist them. Yeah, it's too much shit in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They got to be damn near unconscious yeah. for that. Bro, yeah, like if you do that, yeah. you're just manhandling somebody else. Yeah. Bro. No way. Have you ever been knocked down unconscious? Yeah, one time. For real? One time, actually. Oh, I actually shit. got I actually got knocked out in one of my fights, like my huh? big fights. Yeah, that uh yeah. they said I mean I, I I didn't watch that fight, but I was yeah. watching one of your fights. I think the one you dominated yeah, in, your last yeah, one. Yeah. And they said they're going you kinda of going over your, your last fights and right. since you got knocked out on like thirteen seconds. Yeah, it, so actually I got I got knocked out against a guy that I went to go touch gloves, you know? And I will never make that mistake again, but I went to go touch gloves oh. and then he he threw a kick. Oh. And then that was it, you know. Wait, I couldn't what? recover. Yeah, it's like that Floyd, yeah. Floyd like Mayweather Floyd, thing. Like Floyd, like that, and then yeah, and it wasn't oh. even. And he, did, we didn't even touch gloves or nothing. You know, it was just the beginning of the fight. And this is this so you just like, walking up, ding, 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 and you like. Yeah, and my head. Kicks. I'm thinking we're finna do that, and then he just kicked me. You know. Oh. And and I, I I don't I don't take nothing from him. You know, like that's my fault because I play. But that's what the amateurs are for. So you can get in there and make those mistakes to know better. You know, so not to do that kind of stuff ever again. You wow. Know? That's yeah, crazy. definitely. Because I was thinking, I'm wondering, like, damn, like, how you get knocked out in right. 15, you're 13 like, never. seconds? Yeah, like, you watch yeah. all my fights, you're like, never, bro. What happen? the hell? Yeah, definitely. So, that okay. threw me off. Yeah. That explains it, though. Yeah. 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 That would have pissed me off, though, for real. Like, yeah, bro. a lot of people were bad about that. A lot of people, they didn't think that the fight was actually legal. They actually wanted to try and get it overturned. But like we a just protest never, type deal? Yeah, we yeah, just, just never wanted experience. Yeah, for me, it was just like, it's my fault. I don't care. But everyone was already trying to protest it, trying to go to camo, everything. But... Not I ain't gonna lie. I was uh, somebody ever just like kick me in my head like that. Yeah. Like it just cause like, right? Like you know, like for you to take your leg and put it all yeah. the way up here to somebody is like, yeah. bro. I was like, I always wanted to do that to somebody. Yeah, you got. <laughs> you got. I ain't gonna lie. You just come to the drone and try it one time. Because hey, my, it catch you, you so kid. off guard. Though. Hey, my yeah. dad was the punter on the Edison football team, so I, I feel like it's in my blood. Yeah, like, good leg. I feel like yeah. I could kick the shit out of somebody. Yeah, though. you definitely. Oh, yeah. Next Wait. time, like, if I ever get into another one-on-one, I'm probably going to pull just that out. Kick. Hell yeah. Don't pull that shit out, JJ. You I might just practice I, that shit, you're going to yeah. pull your leg. I, I low-key, when I'm alone, no one's around, I low-key kind of kick. Yeah, he be getting, I know, bro. When you're by yourself, everybody get their little shadow box I get, in, you know, yeah. turning to Bruce Lee real quick. I get a little kick. Yeah. Keep, you know, I feel like he keep working on it a little bit. He might catch somebody with it. Uh, okay, so. Like you said, it's unexpected. Somebody, some guy at the club. Yeah, shit is He think he's off in the fight. Because they not even looking at this. At this, They like right here, and then some just come right here. Yeah. If you get your leg up like that, JJ, and I'm with you, I promise you, I'm gonna pass the fuck out. If bro. I do that, then it must. I was definitely underestimate. I mean, I'm, I look. If you at, do that shit, you need to come here and train. I look that bro as a weenie. If I ever try to kick him, like he, yeah, or like he a weenie, I'm about to kick he the shit out this dude. Yeah. Like, like what is up. like what is your like your finisher? Like you just like I, this got to work. Your left hand. My left hand. My okay, straight left. Hand. I feel so like you're southpaw. Yeah, I'm a southpaw, oh, yeah. and right. I feel like my straight left hand. That's when I know like. I'm about to take somebody out, it's mm. gonna be that shot. No it's shit. gonna be that shot. So you pretty much setting that up the right. whole time? Yeah, once I set that up, once I find that, I'm like, oh, he's gonna have a long night. Do you got a new celebration move for Saturday? I don't. A lot of people keep telling me I need to make I, one. I know, so you I know need... that, that uh, Boss Man Dilo, that's kind of like a new thing right now. I don't know if you got time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is. They it's a little like a viral dance. dance. It's like a viral dance. I, I have to check don't it out. Do that shit. <laughs> don't do hey, that shit. Hey, hey, bro. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, you gotta get your boogie on after the dub. Man. You yeah, you gotta. I mean. you to. <laughs> they like, they like that marketing. And I was going to yeah. ask you that too yeah. because, um, I think it was this event you guys went to. Was that ABC Thirty? Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, I noticed that you do a lot of media. Like, was yeah. it, is that something more so your team inspired you to do, or trying to push you to do, no. or is that something you thought of as a fighter? Like, I need that exposure. I need that. You know, I do that. I, I my team helps me. They mm. help me with connections. They know I'm trying to actively push to get connections. But as far as like trying to make that happen, I'm the one making that happen because I know that. There's two sides to this fight game. You mm -hmm. got to be a killer, but you got to also market yourself. You know, yeah, like exactly. if you're a killer, but you're not marketing yourself good, you're not going to get paid as good. Yeah, you got to sell like, fights. Yeah, you right. got to sell. I feel like Adrian Broner is surviving off of his marketing. Yeah, definitely. Because like, every definitely. time I turn around, he's losing. Right. But I always hear about his fights. You, you know, know,
Conor McGregor. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah bro, oh, yeah, Conor's he, big on that. Bro, he hasn't won a fight since forever, yeah. but he's still getting... He's a big... He's a big right, house. Yeah, he's right. A big he's still man. marketing, getting paid. Yeah. Now, we want fighting. something different, though, from you. We want you to beat their ass and, and talk shit that. and yeah. play marketing. Yeah, I'm like Tank. That's why. Yeah, That's Adrian why like Broder Tank. been getting his ass. JJ, you can do that sidekick on him. <laughs> and that shit will work. Like, yeah, I don't know, real. man. AB been, been... Yeah, I, I think, know. like, he had the most potential. Yeah. But he just kind of, like, let the fame and shit get to he him. Did. He did. He turned into a celebrity. Yeah, he didn't, he really, wasn't yeah, a he didn't really start training right and shit right. like that. You he know, get off the focus. He turns into a celebrity for yeah. sure. I think so, he saw Floyd and thought it was easy. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people see Floyd and don't, and don't think he put the work in too. Yeah, right. Yeah. But he pro- he worked right. just as hard. He I have, does. I'm not harder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like as much as you see him turn up, he's working twice that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, man. You always get that little time to speak for yourself. People think because that's all they see that that's right. all he do. Right. So do you do the like get up like three o'clock in the morning, go running, and uh, do all no, that shit? I don't. I don't get up by three. So I used to like uh, for. For when I used to boss back in the day, I used to be up at 5 a.m. every morning. That was like 19 through 21. I used to be right. 5 a.m. every morning running yeah. down Kearney. But when I started MMA now, I normally just do uh, either run in the morning, like 8.30, mm-hmm. or not, I'll do Smash HQ. So I grapple first thing in the morning. Gotcha. And that's normally my schedule for morning training. That's what's up, man. I, so I, you run so. down Kearney. You from that side of town? Yep. Yeah, I'm a West Side baby. Oh, okay, that's what's yeah, up, okay. Man. You know, got a West Side legend in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. We got some West Side blood in the house. Yes, Where's your favorite place to eat at on the West Side? Is it Triple Favorite Burger? You know, you know, my aunt really likes going there, Triple Burger, a lot. But yeah, okay. I honestly have a new spot, but they're kind of newer, but Manhattan Deli. Oh, oh yeah, them sandwiches. Manhattan Deli. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> them yes, sir. and that milkshake. Yeah. I don't know if you can have a milkshake. No, fast. yeah, I get root beer floats, oh. milkshakes, slushies, yeah. everything over there. I just ate a burger when we was online. Yeah. I was eating a burger from Manhattan Deli. Hey, yes. Yeah, the burgers is crucial. Yes, I Manhattan put, Deli, shout out them. Their burgers shout are Shout out Manhattan Deli. Hey, listen. <laughs> Boy, them salads is second to yes. none, man. Yes. Them salads is crazy in there. And the milkshake, yes. I think I just had a banana milkshake in there. Boy. Yeah. Yeah, Shit, I'm sure. probably going to stop by there Bomb. when we leave Delicious. from here. Yeah, okay. Definitely so. stop by Manhattan Deli. We Manhattan right Deli. Right by Food Max on Fresno Street. So what, what do you Long eat line. there, though, as a vegetarian? Yeah. Like, you so, just. So uh, they have, they have like, a, they have a veggie burger there. Okay. Yeah. They have one veggie burger there, and then I eat salads from there sometimes, or I'll just get their quesadilla. Okay. But yeah. besides that, that, I really don't, I can't order a lot off their menu. Yeah. Even we'll if I get the fries, you. the buffalo fries, the buffalo fries, I'll get them without. Just meat. with the sauce? Yeah, just with the uh, sauce and the cheese. So what's, as a, as a vegetarian, what would be your spot to go to? Can he eat plenty of vegan? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out Planet Vegan too. They got yeah. some bomb vegetarian yes, sir. food too. Shout out Planet Vegan. Yeah, My boy out Mike Planet out Vegan. there now. Yes, sir. Uh, for me, I really, I really don't have no like specific spot I go to mm. as a vegetarian because uh, there's not a specific vegetarian spot here. You right. know, I think, but in Sacramento. Oh, that's why I feel like okay. If I had to choose anywhere to eat, that's where I'll go to eat as a vegetarian. Sacramento, yeah, Sacramento okay, definitely. Gotcha, gotcha. Like the whole Bay Area, I think they like more like sort of. Yeah, I know like, Sac ain't the Bay, but like right. I think the Bay Area caters to more of that. Yeah, yeah, more that food. Food. Definitely. Yeah. Once you start going up north, they have a lot yeah. more vegetarian places. I think it's called Veggie Grill or Vegan Grill or something like that. That's just pretty good out yeah. there. Yeah. Hell good, okay, so so as a pro, would you have to relocate the train? So that's definitely the plan. A lot of people don't know that, but definitely, I think I'm gonna be making a move to Vegas. Soon. Oh, okay. Oh, but okay. that's like an MMA capital almost. Huh? Right. In, 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 well, in, in, in USA. Oh, yeah, yeah true. Yeah, fight yeah. Because all, all the biggest boxing fights are there, all yeah. the MMA biggest. If it's not at, if it's not at a Madison Square Garden, it's at MGM. Yeah. So yeah. that's definitely the biggest fights for anything. Is, C- is Caesar Palace still a thing? Uh, they do yeah. MGM, yeah. Caesar Palace, and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, they do everything down there. Yeah. All, 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 the, all the fight, all the. All the hotels down there, they all put on fights. You know, mm-hmm. like like everyone's fine. Like Tanks probably fought at Mandalay Bay before I know AB fought. Do you gamble? There, no, no. Oh, gambling. that's good. Man. Yeah, no gambling. Yeah, I don't man. think a pro athlete should be gambling. Yeah, I, I don't want to. No, that that can almost cost you. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to build no habits. No, yeah. no, that's good. Don't man. Cause yeah, that can cost you. It's a lot of casinos. Like right, that. it's that. That's basically all that's out there that's for the most part. That's all Vegas is. After casinos. after you leave the strip, there's nothing less than Vegas. Right, like, nothing. Right. Damn. Not really. Okay. So besides. Fighting, like what do you what do you do? Like hobby wise. So so uh, I think that I like to dance. I dance a lot. It's kind of crazy. So yeah. how do you not know the uh, the boss man dance? Boss that's that's crazy because I don't, I don't be. Uh, I'm sure you've seen media, it though. You don't do social media. Yeah, you know what? I think if I seen it, I would know what it was. Yeah, you, you know, probably know. know. It's all over the place. It. Right. Nah, but I I like I like uh, going out to dance stuff. Like I have a, a lot of uh, Mexican friends and. They all dance, so we oh, you dance do the uh, you do the uh, the banda. 
Yeah, banda and bailes and all that. I definitely like dancing and doing are stuff. Are you like are you mixed with Mexican? No, I'm not. But I have an adopted family. Shout out them that kind of took me in when I was 12. Okay. And every I I think I'm Mexican because of them. So oh, okay. For me, I feel like I have a part of Mexican on me. But okay. I'm That's just full up. black. But yeah. Definitely okay. have some. Mexican oh, you full summer. black? Yeah, I'm full oh, okay. black. Okay, I thought you had some no type mix. of biracial. Everyone always thinks I'm mixed. Nah, I'm full yeah, black. I, I, yeah, I can relate to that. People, you got like some that. Creole somewhere, brother. <laughs> yeah, people always. <laughs> That's what I would get. Yeah. I would get some, that. They'd be like, you, you got, got some Creole, Creole somewhere. You, somewhere. <laughs> so you do the Arcos and all those places. Arcos. 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 It's a it's a, it's a Mexican spot. Arcos. It's a spot called Arcos too. Arcos? Yeah. Oh, right there by Rowley's, huh? Yeah. Oh. Is that it? It's popping, too. Oh. oh I got right invited there, right there a couple times. On the yeah, yeah. west side, yeah, yeah, they do be popping, too. You Arcos. go in there? I've been in there like three times, four I've times. I've never been in there before. They're nice. It's they cracking nice. in there. It, I, yeah, no. I've no, been invited, it but I never, I just never went. No, Arcos be popping, bro. They yeah, be popping. Yeah, I... I I, I I've seen the parking lot before. It looked thick, yeah. but I was just like, yeah. no, nah, I can't go in there for Definitely. sure. And they <laughs> have live banda in there. That's yeah. where you go to dance and you know do all that bailes and stuff like that. Do you ever pull the banda? No, no. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pricey, boy. Yeah. One of my coworkers every week. <laughs> I'm like, man, you spending yeah. a thousand? That's yeah, a band. My girl's for release. What? To yeah. get the band to come play at your table? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they do that. That's a thing. Like, they'll come down and they That's like bossed up. You know how we yeah. like to sit on couches and shit? Right. Yeah. They like, man, right. let's get the band over here. Right. That's yeah. they man, that. It, it costs some bring, chicken. they bring all the instruments over there and play in front of your table. Pass. That's some chicken, too, though. Yeah. For real? Man. For how long? I don't know. It costs uh, like, money, like a though. song? It's like per song, I think. It's like per song. Yeah, it costs <laughs> some bread. But it's a flex, for real. <laughs> it is. It's like. It is. If they're, at your table, if they're at your table, you're that guy. Bring yeah. me a Bluetooth sprinkler. Huh? <laughs> he said, bring me a Bluetooth sprinkler. sprinkler. That's good. All right, Josh. The come up, Kid Simpson. Yes, Anything sir. you want to tell the people before you go? First off, you got to fight. This Saturday, yes, sir. September 14th, Jonathan Gonzalez in Bakersfield yes, at the sir. Mechanics Bank Arena. Yes, sir. You'll be defending your title right here. Yes, sir. It's his last amateur fight. So if you're in the 616 805, whatever area you call it, you call it. 661. Yeah, 661. Six, 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 go. go. Check him out. Yes, sir. Um, anything you want to tell the people before we go? Uh, I just want to say shout out all the talent coming up in Fresno. You know, shout out to everybody doing their thing. Keep keep doing your thing. Keep getting big. Keep hustling. You know, stay stay out of trouble. And then everybody that supports me, shout out all my supporters. You know, I appreciate it big time. I do this all for you guys. I think y'all are a big reason I push. A big reason we go get these straps. We're going to keep getting them. And shout out to my family. You know, they're always supporting me big time. On the back burner of when everything happens, they're there for me. And shout out my coaches because they put in a lot of work for me. So definitely shout out the whole squad that makes this whole thing happen. Yes, shout sir. out Fresno. And yes, shout out to Marquitos Jay. Boxing Gym yeah. for allowing us to shoot in here. This yes, is the sir. Go Farm. Shout out Marquitos. Can handle that, please? I'm Westside JJ. I'm here with Freeway Zoe. Shout I'm here with the Zoe. Come Thank Up you, Kid. And shout out, out Jay. We out of here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Go out oh, there. when that fight's out of shit. Yes, sir. So, yeah, girl, yeah. Being, you need to check her. It's a fucking movie. Stop it, my nigga. Would you handle that, please?